Hey everybody, Alex Terrace here, healthhacksreview.com. Thanks for watching. So in this video, uh, I just want to focus on something that is so prevalent in the infrared sauna industry. I would say probably 85% of brands do this one thing uh, with their sauna, which is they put plywood uh, in the top of the roof on the exterior, okay? And they say on the exterior, uh, because on the interior of the sauna, there's usually some uh, cedar or hemlock or whatever is the chosen wood on the interior portion, then you usually have some lights recessed in there, right? So the whole interior is usually the wood type that you buy, right? I want a cedar sauna, so you'd expect to see a cedar inside on the roof. But on the exterior, on if, so if we got on a ladder in this video, I'll show you, uh, and we looked at the actual top of the sauna, which is, this is my hand right here. <laughs> and uh, here's, here, here we are looking down at the top of the sauna. Um, so right up here, this is where, again, most brands of sauna uh, will actually use a big, large plywood piece um, to cover the top, okay? And then normally if you lift that up, that's where you see a bunch of different wires and things like that go to different heaters, things like that. Okay, so, uh, we're just gonna let this video play here. So basically I'm just showing, this is really normal again to see with the exception of just a few brands in the industry that do not use plywood. Um, so what's the point of this video? Uh, the point of this video is basically that uh, plywood essentially is something that is created uh, with synthetic glues or adhesives where they're putting layers of wood chips or something like that. Um, there's a couple different ways to make plywood, but basically they're using synthetic adhesives, number one. Number two is that uh, traditionally it's, it's very common to accelerate the curing process of uh, plywood with formaldehyde. So that is a chemical that is not very good for you, something that will off-gas into the air along with synthetic adhesives. And so this is the big shocker for me um, but such a common practice um, to be using this in the top of saunas and granted it's not interior to the sauna but where do you have that infrared sauna you have to ask yourself you have the infrared sauna in usually inside your home correct you usually have it in a room that you might even be using right on a regular basis now if you don't know google around first number one if you don't know apply what is just do a quick google we look at that number two google on the uh, average indoor air quality of a household, okay? The most polluted or worst quality uh, air, uh, air is basically usually inside of a person's home. So this is, this is like another thing to add to the toxin load inside of a person's home is something potentially that will off-gas, okay? And what will cause off-gassing of uh, something like a plywood potentially is if there's a breakdown in the adhesives and if there is if the formaldehyde which is soaked in there is somehow also going to uh, be able to vaporize or slowly off gas as the term into the air and what can really accelerate that process potentially is heat so of course infrared saunas produce heat and where does a lot of that heat go a lot of that heat will usually go out the side walls because that's where the emitters are normally. But heat also rises, correct? So it's rising up to the ceiling and a lot of that heat is warming the roof, okay? But then of course you also have plywood up there. So personally, I wouldn't want to take the chance with a sauna that has plywood in the roof if it's going to be inside my home. And after years and years and years, the thing about wood and infrared saunas is that they expand when it heats up and it's turned on and it contracts. Expand, contract, expand, and contract, you know, week after week for years. And that is really kind of like the ideal conditions, essentially, if something is going to off gas or break down, basically on a molecular level, for that to actually happen. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of also a little skeptical about companies that'll say they have an indoor air quality certification test, right? Uh, which is not too common, um, or something like that that is testing off-gassing or VOCs or things like that, uh, but are using plywood, you know what I mean? That causes me to question that 
you know, I, I don't know if in the long run that certification is really going to hold true. What I like to look for is sauna companies and models that are using the same wood type all the way through the sauna. So if they say it's a basswood sauna, they say it's a cedar sauna, you should expect that everything from the frame, from the roof, all of it is going to be that same wood type. Okay, not a softer wood, no pine in between, okay, no particle board, no plywood, whatever it is. It's just that solid wood type. It's what they say is what it is. And so, again, going back to my point, I'm a little skeptical or concerned with, even if there is an indoor air quality test, remember that that test was only done, you know, one time by a third party engineering firm. And if there is a, a commonly known material that is made with a lot of chemicals and generally will potentially off gas over time after it's broken down a good amount, again, that could take time. So you're not really going to find that on a indoor air quality sort of chemical test. I, I doubt it would show itself uh, for the first test. Um, I'd be curious. If, they could, if somebody could do that test, you know, one year later after usage or after in a commercial facility after a lot of usage or something like that, that I would be very curious about to see what the results would be and if it's off gassing at that point. Um, so, you know, I'm always saying it might off gas, it might do this. I'm not saying absolutely if you see plywood in the ceiling, it's 100% going to off gas on you. I'm not saying that at all, but I am just pointing out that materials break down and off gas in the exposure of heat very commonly, okay? They can remain pretty inert if not. If you just have a piece of plywood, for example, sitting next to you, normal conditions, normal temperature, no sun exposure, or anything like that, no heat, it's not gonna off gas on you, it's not gonna happen. But a material that's heated, again, expanding, contracting, Potentially, that's what we see when we start to look at material science, okay, and chemistry and physics even as well. So I hope these points are understood. If you have questions about this video and you want me to go in a little bit more detail about what I was saying, reach out on my website, healthhacksreview.com. You can live chat with me, email, phone, whatever works for you. Um, and also, if you're just looking for brands that are the same wood type all the way through the sauna. You know, they had the third party indoor air quality certification and there is no sorts of materials that are being used for sure that potentially could off gas or anything like that. Um, not very many saunas um, are fit into that category, but they do exist. And that would be probably what I would term medical grade. That term is thrown around fairly loosely out there, but I have my own interpretation, my own definition of that, that I think makes a lot more sense than some of the claims out there. So thanks again for watching the video. And again, give this uh, video a like in the YouTube if you found it helpful. You always feel free to, you can leave comments below and subscribe if you want some updates. Appreciate it.